Hi there guys and welcome to the channel. In this video today it's going to be a video all about candle wicks and how to go about choosing the right wick for your candle. For those of you who are new to making candles you might not be aware just of how difficult it is to find the right wick to go into your candle. Um, there is a number of reasons why that and it is due to every combination of ingredient that you put into your candle has a direct effect on the burning of the wick. And for those who are regular candle makers already, you will already be aware that it is really difficult to get a candle to work just as effectively as you want it to and to throw its scent uh, across the room, which is again down to one of the ingredients being wick choice. Hello and welcome to the channel. Thank you for watching this video. Um, please do me a favor and subscribe to the channel. It really helps in the growth of the channel and it makes me feel better too when I see the numbers of subscribers growing. It takes a lot of time and effort to make these videos and all I ask in return is just a sign of thanks just by subscribing to the channel. Thank you very much. So the topic of wicking and how to go about wicking a candle can be a very in-depth video. So I'm going to create a series of videos uh, all related to candle making. This particular one, um, it might be in two parts, but this particular one today is going to be about wicking how to go about choosing the right size wick. Well, first of all, how to go about choosing the right type of wick and then the right size in that type of wick for your candle container. There are literally hundreds and hundreds of wicks, wick types and wick sizes available. In my box here, I've probably got close to about 50 different types of wicks. Um, all will play their part in, in a particular candle all of them will play their part in a candle, but it all depends on the ingredients going into that particular candle, from wax choice to fragrance oil, and all different types of fragrance oil will have a different effect on a wick. So just because you found one working wick with one fragrance oil and one type of wax doesn't mean it's gonna be brilliant in a, another candle with a different fragrance oil, because the fragrance oil is an ingredient that affects the wick burning. Also, whether you choose to dye your wax will have a direct effect on the burning of the wick. Some dyes are meant solely for wax melts and some dyes are used for both wax melts and candles. Um, the reason being the wrong type of dye as it travels up the wick can clog the wick up and that stops it from working effectively in dispersing heat to heat up a melt pool to then cause an effective scent throw. Um, clogging off the wick is one of the reasons for a ashy wick at the end of the wick it's very um, sooty and like you see like a build up of um, residue that can be from a number of things but one of those can be a bad choice of uh, candle dye at the end of the day the only way to really find a perfect combination of all types of ingredients in a candle is trial and error the, the more you do that the more experienced you're going to be at eliminating certain wicks in certain waxes and certain oils and then instead of being 50 different types of wicks to choose you can narrow it down to three or four and then once you've found that it's just playing about with the particular types of wicks and then just the the size of wicks so when you're going to choose the type of wicks for your container candle you firstly have to think about the type of wax you're using so there's certain types of wicks designed for certain types of wax for example your paraffin waxes will have a certain type of wick your vegetables waxes will have a certain type of wick that won't necessarily work in a paraffin wax and then there's also your blended types of waxes they have wicks designed for those as well so wick choice comes down to or is tied to the type of wax you're using so for your paraffin waxes you want to be looking for an LX wick or a got them written down here TG wick that's one I've used quite a bit and then there's also the Weedo Eco wick the, the, the eco wick is a sort of a combination between a vegetable and paraffin use. Um, sometimes I find that the ones that are usable in multiple waxes are not specifically great in either. So it's best to try and find one that is designed for a certain type of wax. So if you're using paraffin, try and look for a wick that is designed for paraffin. Uh, so like the LX wicks, that's, that is just designed for paraffin waxes. Then you've got your blended types of waxes, so partly paraffin, partly vegetable. A suitable wick for that choice is a Stabilo wick by Weedo again. And then there's also your 
heavy vegetable uh, type of waxes, so your soy waxes. Um, you've got the VRL and the TCR. They're designed for heavy use in vegetables. The types of wicks I've just named there doesn't include all of the wicks available. They're just the common ones that are used more so these days in container candles. There is still a host of other types of wicks that are just as good maybe that I haven't tried before, but these are the main ones that I use in my candles. So when you've identified the type of wicks you're gonna use, for example, let's just talk here about a paraffin uh, wax that we're using, and we're using an LX type of wick. Now, within the LX wick, there's a multiple choices of size. The size of, of the wick is to do in relation to the width of, of, of the wick, not the length. So they come in different lengths, that just depends on the, the, the actual height of your container. That's got nothing to do with the size. So the size of a wick is all to do with how wide it is. Um, so you get wicks have a different type of numbering, but normally they go uh, like, like an eco wick, it goes uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, and then one, two, three, four, and so on. So gradually the numbers get bigger. As the numbers get bigger, all that means is, so the wick is just getting gradually wider. And the reason for that is the wider your container is, then the bigger the wick you're gonna to need to throw out heat to the edge of your container. So that's one of the first processes of elimination to finding the specific wick for your container is one, you've identified the wax you're using, so then you identify the type of wick. Then two, the next process of wick identification is the width of, of the wick, so the, the, the actual size of the wick. And then that is down to trial and error. So on each supplier's uh, websites, they normally give you a guide to the sort of uh, width of the wick to the width of the container that it is suitable for. It's only a guide. The reason being it's only a guide because there's other variables that affect the burden of the wick, being candle dye and your fragrance oil. They both affect the burning of the wick, so how, how much heat comes out of that wick. So a very important point to take into account with how well a candle is burning is down to how long you've left it to cure. So candles don't necessarily burn very effectively and throw a decent scent throw within the first two weeks of being made. They need somewhere between two to four weeks of cure time. Cure time meaning to dry and to harden, to set, before they can be lit and then throw an effective scent throw to fill the room. Initially, if you make a candle and you just leave it for a couple of days and then go to burn it, the wax is not very hard yet. It hasn't really set very hard. Obviously, it's gonna look and feel very hard to you, but in terms of the wax still hardening, still curing, it's still got another, you know, well, two to three, two to four weeks of hardening before it might even be effective. So when you test a candle after just two days of being made, you might be disappointed with it because it's not filling the room with scent as you would hope it to be. And that's not necessarily down to anything other than it hasn't actually finished curing yet. So you might be disregarding that particular wick as being ineffective for that for that type of wax. When in effect, if you'd left it another two to four weeks, it will burn totally differently. It might be a great smelling candle, but you have to give it time to cure. And in the cure time really is longer the better. If you can leave it four weeks before you test one, so you, you do your test burning, that will have a much better scent throw than one that you've left for two weeks. And again, if, you if you're willing to leave it for six weeks, again, it will have a better scent throw than one you've left for four weeks. It's just the way it goes. Um, you can buy additives to harden your wax curing process. So there's an additive. Can't remember what it is now, but I'll, I'll, add, the, I'll add it as an overlay for the name of that additive. But what that additive does, it shortens down the curing time. So it's an additive that you add in the mixing process when you're melting your wax, that you add that in at the same time, and then it, when it dries, it acts as hardening the wax quicker. So instead of it being a four week cure time, it might be a two week cure time. It's just come to me now. So the name of that additive is palm stirring. So that's an additive. It, it, it's a, a type of wax that you just add into your main body. You'd only use a very, very, very small amount. So for 100 grams of wax, you might only use half a gram to two grams, depending on how quickly you want it to harden. 
The reason I'm hesitant to give an exact figure is because it's all down to testing. Um, if your wax is too hard, it's not going to burn effectively with the wick you're using and you'd have to up the size of your wick for it to burn a harder type of wax. And then again, if you don't use enough, then your, then your wax is going to be, still be soft, which then if you've oversized your wick, meaning you've chose a size of wick that's too wide, it's going to burn a lot quicker and also burn off the fragrance oil a lot quicker. So um, yeah, the choice of wick is not an easy topic to talk about because um, there's many variables that have effects on the burn of a candle. So as I said at the beginning of this video, the topic of wick uh, discussion is very in-depth, or it can be very in-depth, and um, I don't want this video to drag on for too long. So I am going to make a part two to this video, which is going to be all about how the finished candle with the wick at the top just sticking out, um, how that amount of wick left and the sizing of wick is crucial. So some of the pitfalls, some of the uh, reasons why people go wrong and they've got a badly burning candle is because of that little bit at the end. Um, again, that will all be in part two and uh, that will be again quite in depth but a very good watch for those of you who are getting into candle making. Um, so I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thank you very much for watching. If you are learning stuff and enjoying my videos, please can you subscribe to my channel. It really helps the channel to grow and it gives me a good feeling that I'm doing something good in my videos and you're enjoying them. Um, so yeah, it'd be greatly appreciated for me if you can subscribe to the channel, give this video a thumbs up, and please look out for part two. That is, again, going to be a very good uh, detailed video about candle making and wick choice. Uh, thank you very much, and see you in the next one.